What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. Today, my friend, Randolfo, one the Not a Rubicon, is back again to talk about the take on sad hams and information about the FCC that he's been talking about, which uh, I found interesting, not just as an amateur radio operator, but as an operator of other radio services. And everything he's kind of been talking about has kind of been connected to all of that. So we're going to get started real soon here. Enjoy the memes. We'll be talking to you soon. How's it going, everybody? Thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Another fun interview with Randolfo. We had a, a lot of fun the last time, and from the views and all the comments we got, I was like, well, we, we definitely got to have him back. And he agreed, he obliged, and so he's going to come back and talk to us, uh, you know, from a outsider's point of view, but still in our radio fraternity of services. So just remember, here at the Ham Radio Crash Course, and if you join us on the Discord, you're welcome. It's re regardless if you are a ham radio operator, CB enthusiast, GMRS user, radio is radio. There are differences, of course, and yeah, you got to take a test if you want to be an amateur radio operator. But hey, we all are in this together, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. But before we get there, i got a couple of things i got to hit. Go check out hamtactical.com for any merch related to the Ham Radio Crash Course. My wife dropped a couple of uh, new ones specifically for our podcast. She has created the HRCC Movie Club shirt, which is based off of our new segment where we have been reviewing prepper and disaster movies that either have or they don't have to have radio, but a lot of them surprisingly do if you look hard enough. Obviously, we haven't got the full-on ham radio treatment like movies like Frequency, which we ranked very high. Uh, still, though, one of the highest rated is 10 Cloverfield Lane, a very deep preparedness movie. So make sure you go check that out. Thanks for, uh, thanks for going to hamtactical.com. And obviously, we got the eclipse coming up. We talked about this on Ham Nation earlier this week. If you go back and watch that episode, we had uh, we talked a little bit about what's going on with the actual day of. They're doing a 10-hour-long eclipse event that will be used to collect data on RF propagation during and before and after the totality of the eclipse and as it moves across the United States and the Americas, basically. So that's a lot of fun. Check that out. Information is in the links for all of these in the video description. And we've got Visalia coming up, the International DX Convention that I am emceeing both the banquet dinner and the breakfast on Sunday. So if you come on out, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a vendor area, but there's a lot of talk. So if you are interested in long distance communication, if you are interested in those DX contacts, DX stands for long distance, then this is possibly the place to be, at least uh, I think this is going to be one of the largest collection of those type of smart people in the room. So make sure you check that out. Okay, okay. And let's see, coming up real soon, Hotels on the Air. It's our yearly contest, uh, contest is the wrong term, radio event that is ran from the Ohio area for everybody coming out to Hamvention. So many hams are going to be in hotels. Why not have a little bit of fun? when you're back in your hotel room. So Hotels on the Air, link is in the description. Check that out. And something new that uh, one of our admins is running, Dom, he's doing uh, HF Data Transfer Challenge. And so the goal of this is the fastest, fastest transfer of 1.4 megabytes of data in a file over HF. And you can use 160 meters through 10 meters. And we already have some submissions for that. So if you'd like to be on that list of who can send 1.44 megabytes of data basically the size of a floppy disk back when you were an you know back when i was a kid as an old uh that's what we used to send our files right 1.44 so check that out links are in the video description all right so we'll be doing a discord after chat uh, randolfo might not be able to join us but if he does you know it's always welcome guys the links in the description for our discord make sure you go check that out um it's free to join and it's a 24 7 discord server where all questions are answered but after every one of these live streams we take your radio questions first and uh 
If you're a new member, we give you priority uh, in that. It's free to join, though. Don't worry about it, and it's a lot of fun. So we're talking to Nada Rubicon. You've probably seen him out on the internets. Yes, he covers a lot of GMRS content, but he's talked about ham radios many, many times. And sometimes, I, I should probably get him to clarify, but he has people that sometimes are a little salty in the comments uh, in his videos. And that has led to a name called the Sad Ham. And that means a lot of things to a lot of different people, but this is the guy that kind of created it. So we're going to bring him in here, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that and, and dig a little bit deeper since the last time we had him out. So, Randolfo, how are you doing, sir? Good, Josh. How's it going? <laughs> very, very good. Thanks for joining me, and uh, yeah. So how, how have you been? How have things been going? Uh, another wonderful day in paradise, Josh. Yeah. It's raining so outside. What, uh, what else could I ask for? Yeah, I, I like the rain. I, personally, we don't we don't get a ton of that. Randolph is not too far from me, so uh, we we share weather patterns, as it were. But I I, I like it. Cleans up the the space a little bit. So dirty uh, we're <laughs> out here in California. Right. So you have put out a couple of videos, and in fact, let me let me bring this. Uh, we'll go we'll go right back here, and, and we'll get you in here as well. Yeah. So you've been putting out videos talking about basically the realities of the FCC because there's an often repeated line that you've hit upon that you know if you break the FCC laws and even the term law in this case is is not necessarily the correct one that uh, you're gonna get locked up fined dragged off and uh, kind of funny if you if you look at the background of uh, of Randy's famous wall there what's going on in the background right uh, that the FCC is gonna come and maybe take out a, a beloved family member where does that all come from the, the the start of this video series that you've been doing uh, from my online adventures uh, going back to uh, even before I was doing uh, radio videos if you go online and you ask a question you know having to you know the, the kind of questions that most beginners ask um, you know, you get those responses from some people that are just not connected to reality. And, in, and I didn't know that they weren't connected to reality. And I really thought uh, when I started using my uh, Bufwang UV5R on GMRS that I was going to go to jail if, you know, if I got caught. And that for sure I uh, was uh, assuming that uh, the FCC was tracking me down every time I keyed up. And as I realized that that's all just BS... Uh, but I still keep seeing these, you know, what else can you call them, but lies that some people keep spreading. It just, I, I felt that I had to, uh, I had to address it. I had to let the truth be known. And, and obviously, go, go check out Randy's channel and you can watch a deeper dive into all of this. But uh, through your investigations, your investigative journal uh, <laughs> journalism that you've been doing, how, how many actual, like, We'll call it real fines against radio services, not FM broadcast, because you know that's where the FCC gets their their big money from. How many of those have you actually found? And and I guess quickly, if you can sum them up, what what's the little bit of the background on it? Yeah, so in the last ten years, there's like less than ten, <laughs> right. uh, and most of those, several of those, actually go back five and six and seven years themselves. So mm -hmm. really, if you look at the actual when they were uh, breaking the rules, not laws, but rules, you know, those are eight, ten. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so the to say that nobody would ever get into any trouble at all by the FCC would, would not be a true statement. Right. Um, but to say that you would be hit by lightning twice before you are likely to be get in any trouble, uh, any serious trouble from the FCC, uh, is is more uh, more accurate. Uh, and when I'm talking about getting into trouble, you know, there's there's basically three levels. There's uh, or four levels. Uh, they investigate you, uh, which is Randy. Really quick, I don't want you to dox yourself. Your image changed. <laughs> uh oh. You might want to do. I'll go back to me. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, they can see I don't that. know if those are people you don't want on video. So. I... Oh no. My lovely family. Oh, there's oh. more of them. <laughs> it's, it's Apple TV. It went into a sleep yeah. mode, so it yeah. started showing his yeah. screensaver. <laughs> <laughs> See, so yeah, everybody said look out for the uh, the Easter eggs that are in Randy's videos because he, yeah. he definitely has them. So I'm uh, well, somewhere I got some. Uh, yeah, he's gonna put there. a good one on there for you, gal. Yeah. <laughs> so that screen is is very famous for the different stuff that he puts yeah. on, along with his T-shirts and all his other fun stuff. There we go. 
Get some family photos up there. Sorry. Okay, good. We we got it. <laughs> so I, I think I, I I watch your videos, and you know you, we, we can probably dip into this too, but. I think you get a lot of people that have a preconceived notion about you and they jump to big conclusions of what the message you're trying to send. And I took your, and correct me if I'm wrong, I took your FCC videos and comments thereafter to basically just say, this is the reality of this, right? There are X number of real fines that are well documented on a public website. The FCC runs. Anyone could do what you did. But they don't. They just perpetuate this. Narrative. It's easier just to say you'll go to jail if you use your UV5R on GMRS or so if why, you transmit why you, without a license. If if you want, I mean, if, if you thought about it, why do you think people continue to carry that narrative around? Well, I think it makes their little club more exclusive. Uh, some people just, I don't know, it makes them feel more important uh, if they can convince themselves and convince everybody else that they are part of an exclusive club. And it's so exclusive that if you don't memorize these questions on this test and, and get this, pass this test and get your license, uh, you're going to go to jail. That's how exclusive this club is, or you're going to get a $10,000 fine. Yeah. And I mean, uh, I, I am a part of this club and I'm okay with the license testing. Um, I think the privileges are maybe a little upside down on how I would do it, but um I think there's, is it like possibly a personality slash ego thing that's driving it? Because I know so many hams that they care nothing about, you know, right. I think the majority, okay. the majority of hams do not care anything. The majority of hams are nice, well-adjusted, social, socially acceptable uh, people. But then you've got that small percentage, the mm -hmm. very vocal ones that you run into when you're online and, and, you know, they're basically, like it or not, the voice of your hobby. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that have personality defects or whatever it is that uh, they just feel this terminal need to make themselves look smarter than everybody in the room and more important. And part of that is saying that if if you try to uh, crash my club, you're going to get a $10,000 fine. Yeah. There's there's an interesting aspect of it. it it's because it, it seems <laughs> it, it seems like it's also a bit of the the gatekeeping slash right. you know we we gotta set these these rules and and you mentioned the spokesperson because there's no amateur radio spokesperson just like there isn't for GMRS or CB or anything like that. But these people speak on behalf of it and it kind of puts out a sour note a little bit because as you said, kind of it's, it, it's it the tastes... minority. Right. It, yeah, that's I would be in your club now if it wasn't for some people chasing me away when I was learning, uh, studying for the test. I'm like, why? Why would I want to be included in uh, in in this kind of group of people? And then later I learned that wow, in the real world, most of them are are normal people. Yeah. Uh, but it's the you know when you when you're learning and you're going online, the first that's the first thing you see and. They chased me away. Good job. Yeah, so I guess it's an anonymity factor as well because you see people on the Internet. By the way, this is two YouTubers talking, right? So for a lot of you watching, you may not have had the privilege of running into people like this, but I've experienced them at ham club meetings. Um, obviously, like in person, if I'm just doing a radio thing, somebody will come up to me and start telling me, oh, I'm doing this wrong, I'm that wrong. No joke. This has happened to me uh, on multiple occasions. But you and I see it more often because we're making videos in a public space, right? So we get a little bit more of that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. A lot of that. A yeah. lot of that. So um, there, there's something that always comes up, like oftentimes when, when I'm going to do a video with you or I have done a video with you. And and I won't say that you... you, you uh, there, I'll, I'll just I'll ask that as we go along for clarification. You're not advocating like people illegally or uh, on against the FCC rules violate that by transmitting with different services or whatnot. What what's your stance on that? Well, according if you go online, you go to certain uh, websites, they will say that's all I ever do is I tell people that they should violate these laws yes. or those uh, FCC rules and yeah. laws, and that I advocate. Uh, for breaking the laws and that it is my personal responsibility when somebody does break the rules, it's my fault because they watch one of my videos. And I don't think, I, I, 
I have never once advocated or recommended that anyone break any rules in any of my videos. What I try to do is say, here are the rules, and here's what will happen if you break them. Right. And usually that answer is nothing. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, but no, I do not advocate for breaking the rules. It's, it's rules that separate us from the savages. Yeah, I, uh, and, I guess it's also you have a fairly non-standard way of delivering that message. If you compare oh, yourself to other YouTubers that do radio things, you, you have your own way, which is great. That's why there's a lot of people that watch you. But I think it's so different that they're they're not used to somebody just giving you the raw answer, that they're left to jump to their own conclusions about what does Randy really think? Like, right, what is that? Right. Yeah, I don't spoon feed anything. If, <laughs> if you want to be spoon fed. Well, I don't want to say anything about your channel, Josh. Go watch my. Yeah, go, uh, watch <laughs> go watch Josh. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll you know I'll, I'll explain and spoon feed some things. Sure. But yeah, my delivery can be a little different. It is not what you, what most people expect from most YouTube channels, um, and some people hate that, and that's fine. Uh, but when they, when I watch a, a a video or a channel that I don't like. I realize very quickly that I don't like it, and I go watch one of the other 10 billion videos that are on YouTube. <laughs> right. I don't, I don't start rage commenting and complaining and whining about how much I hate it and how I'll never watch it again, and then go watch 10 more comments and leave 20 more, or watch 10 more of their videos right. and leave 20 more comments complaining about how horrible it is. These people are just stupid, and it's it's it it, it just gets so tired. It's well, so tiring. I mean, it, it's tiring also, but you, you have uh, you have got a large viewership because of that. I I, I think, I think that there's a lot probably of a other percentage people... of hate watching that you get. I right. think you know that. Yeah. Right, right. But I, a lot of people also, I think, feel the same way that I do, and they tend to follow along. And for those that don't, that's fine. You don't have to follow along. Yeah. And yeah, there are some that watch just because they hate me or what I say or how I say it or the music that I play. I mean. You know, people will find the dumbest things to get angry about and continue to stay angry about it. Yeah. That are just going and watching something that they like. Super chat from Corpse Lot, my buddy. Uh, I think the vitriol that Randy sees is evident of the very nature of most hobbies, where tribal knowledge is sadly the foundational principles behind enjoying the hobby. I that think that's 100 true. It's 100% true. It's 100% true. You see it, uh, uh, well, in all hobbies. Uh, mm -hmm. The what I find funny is that in a hobby where many of the people, the, it, the, the, one of the uh, things that they try to do the most is show how smart they are, because it's not easy to pass the test. And it's not easy to learn how, to, how an antenna works or whatever it is you guys do. Um, they always want to be the smartest person in the room, and yet they make themselves look so stupid, so readily and so easily uh, in their comments. Yeah, um, I, you, know, I, you you might be the smartest guy in the room, but if you don't understand what sarcasm is, you're a doorknob. So it's it's kind of an interesting thing that I think I also saw happen with the gun community because I you know I I I've, I've been a shooter for a long time and before I got into the amateur radio side of things, I did a lot more shooting than I do now. And you saw the same kind of things, right? 1911 is the best handgun, you know, two world wars, that kind of stuff, right? The, the old tropes and memes that you heard. But you would get those same guys at, at the gun clubs that would be like, well, you know, listen here, you haven't been shooting long enough to know any better, blah, blah, blah. And you start getting the, you know, they start speaking the resume at you before they actually give you the answer to the question so that you know you, you should just sit there, shut up, and, and digest the information, that the ambrosia that is coming forward, right? Have you experienced something like that? <laughs> I don't know. The, in well, different hobbies? It's, it's, in every, it's in the off-roading community yeah. where I am. My Jeep is bigger than yours, and I can if you can't do that, you're a sissy. Uh, yeah, and it, it is in every hobby. Uh, it's just... It just gets irritating. <laughs> I, I, under, I understand. I will ask you, though, that clarifying question. I saw your uh, non-licensed, was it non-licensed radio operator card that you put up? Did you get a lot of blowback on that one? Is that? Yeah. So let, let's <laughs> have a, uh, a ham radio crash course exclusive. For those of you that have seen my card, I can't really hold it too close because I yeah. don't have autofocus on yeah. this camera. This is not a real license. This is for entertainment purposes only. Uh, and it says, if for the people that actually read the words on it, when I've showed it close up on screen, that this is not real. It's for sad hams to shut up. But uh, yeah, a lot of people got 
a lot of people thought it was real because they didn't read the words, uh, and a lot of people got very angry. I, I can uh, only imagine. I yeah, after I saw it, I'm like, oh, he's going to get a lot of comments on that. That's going to be a big one. How dare you, <laughs> sir? You're going to go to jail. How dare you? The audacity. So the, the, I don't want to say the cat's out of the bag because, again, anybody could look this information up, right, that they could say, oh, look, this is, uh, this is what the FCC does. It's a, it's a public website, blah, blah, blah. But now you've, you've kind of shined a light on it with a, with a large audience, right? And so do you think this is going to change the FCC? Or if it does, what would be the outcome of it? Do you want more policing? Or you know, what, what was the, the, the idea? Or was it just, just trying to get the information out there to dispel all this well, fake news? Yeah, I, I don't, what I want is for people to stop telling lies, right? They're, 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 they're not stretching the truth. They're just lying. They're telling mm -hmm. these lies. So that's really what I, what I really want to happen from, uh, from the people. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think the FCC is going to change the way they do anything. They've been doing whatever it is they do for years. They do a lot of good stuff. We were talking off camera earlier that yeah, I'm we going to be making a video. Uh, I'll be uploading a video at some point in the future showing or talking about all the good things that the FCC does. I do not hate the FCC. Be, uh, telling the facts about what the FCC does does not mean that I hate them. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, people get angry at me because I'm saying, Here, here's what they do. Don't get angry at me. Get angry at them. Um, so, no, I don't think they're going to change anything because, uh, as also we were talking, they are self-funded. They make their money from fines that they are actually able to collect, as well as selling uh, frequency allocations and things like that. They, they go where the money is, right? They've got to pay for themselves. Uh, they're, for the most part, not taxpayer-funded. Um, so I don't think they're going to start going after CBers or ham radio operators or GMRS operators any more than they ever have. Although, actually, I should say that in looking through the records, uh, in 2022 20, and 23, I think they went, uh, they, uh, went after more ham and GMRS and CB radio uh, people um, than they had in the previous several years. So maybe they are ramping it up. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because of me, and maybe I've ruined everything. I, don't know. We'll see. I mean, why do you think that? I mean, we're coming out of COVID, right? People I, I are think probably that's what going it was. a little nuts um, on the air. They're probably all shut ins, right? Getting cabin fever and screaming into a CB mic or whatever they were doing. Um, but but aside from that, I, you you dipped into it a bit, and I think it's a good thing to come around to the the folks that got the fines. You, you you mentioned that some of them had a historical record investigation because that's what they do, right? The FCC will do these investigations. But at the end of the day, what was ultimately the reason many of them got fines? Uh, they all got fined for doing really stupid things, the, the kind <laughs> right. of things that your average, even your average over-the-air dickhead isn't going to do. Mm -hmm. um, continually ongoing, sometimes in some cases for years, jamming, making threats, um, just over the top, you, you know, really, really, really over the top, stupid stuff. And it's also my understanding that I don't know if any of them have ever paid the big fines, uh, just because they, uh, uh, they issue a fine or they actually recommend a fine. Well, then they have to get you to pay it. And that's a whole nother process. And I have actually not found, uh, I'm not saying it hasn't happened, but I haven't found, uh, where I can see that somebody actually paid one of these big fines. And I know that many of them have not paid those big fines. Yeah, there was a, there was a guy who got fined, I think it was before COVID or just about when it was happening. There was a, a guy named Billy who got like a $25,000 fine. And he has been fighting the FCC forever. Uh, this is before the, the now holder of the largest fine, who was the guy that called himself radio operator that was trying to direct helicopters dropping water on a fire from the ground yeah. to get and, them and that's to come. a whole other thing that's a whole other that's, right. <laughs> that's right. a whole other level that guy um, needs to be in jail yeah so billy the billy the whacker uh on hf he, he got a twenty five thousand dollar fine and i think he's still fighting it to this day because there there's also an, and maybe you you've got some more info on this but there's a little bit of vagaries as well with regards to the fcc's they're not laws they're rules and it's based off of the the service that you're participating in but even that is a little bit dubious on what that actually means right or i, I don't know have you dipped into this at all because i always find that fascinating uh well the the part that they're not laws you mean or right well that and then you know all the other stuff that goes into it because then you're talking about how do you prosecute something like that 
Right. Well, they, they don't. They recommend. They, and they have judges, and they will decree this or that. Right. Uh, but even even the, the, the wording when you get a fine, it's and I don't have one in front of me, but the on the judgment, uh, it's uh, something to the effect of they, they recommend a fine or, or, or notice of apparent liability, apparently liable. Right. Uh, is, I think, what it is, and NAL. Um, it's, it's like they have no teeth. Yeah, and, and we're not speaking from uh, legal advice, of course, everybody watching, right? Don't, no, don't hit no, us. We, uh, <laughs> do not, I'm not offering legal advice of any kind, and you would be an idiot to take legal advice from the Internet. One of the guys that got in trouble uh, <laughs> apparently took legal advice from the Internet. Uh, he was fighting the FCC, saying that it was his constitutional right to be a dickhead over the air. And uh, the FCC in, their, in, in the uh, documentation had literally, it was like 18 pages of stuff saying, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And I, I think he was getting his legal advice uh, from the FCC, AI, uh, from the internet. Chat GPT legal advice? Chat, right, right. But he still hasn't paid the fine, so maybe right. he is right. So super chat from uh, Preston M4s. I drove a truck before I had a license. I rode my motorcycle before I got my endorsement, and I used radios before I got my license. Sometimes you just have to understand it before want to jump in. Uh, so I, uh, that's another thing that always is kind of an interesting aspect with amateur radio. GMRS is probably less affected by this, but you know I get messages all the time. It's like, hey, can I actually like turn this radio on, or will the FCC come knock down my door and and ATF my my loved one, right? Um, no. So you can listen to your heart's content. You can use the radio in almost all practical sense, except you can't transmit right. in the eyes purchase, of the FCC. You can purchase. You can possess it. Right. Right. It's just when you when you transmit. And popular, uh, contrary to popular belief, the FCC is not out looking for you. They are not out driving around in their black vans, uh, triangulating you. Right. If, if somebody complains and they open an investigation, they can do that. Sure. But they are not out there driving around looking for people breaking the rules on, uh, on GMRS or, or HAM. Again, the way that many people are telling lies, saying that they do. Uh, and I made another video about this. The, uh, I, one of my first videos that I made uh, about the FCC basically doing nothing, uh, I got a lot of hate by people saying that they were sending out letters to all these people every month. And I started replying to these people and asking them, where, where is this information? Because nobody could ever tell me where this was. And it turns out they were referring to the ARRL, the American yes. Radio League of Gentlemen or whatever it is. Um, Extra which are, extraordinary Gentlemen, thank extraordinary, you very much. Right, right. <laughs> uh, they are not the FCC. They're a club. And they're they carry as much weight. I think I said it in one of my videos. A the letter from them carries as much weight as the neighborhood watch lady uh, telling you to move your car. Mm -hmm. um, that, so stop the lies, people. Stop yeah. Lies. No, and if I'm wrong, the other thing, if I'm ever wrong, yeah. leave a link. Tell me where I'm wrong. Uh, because that's the other thing is that these people that, uh, you know, say I say all these things and spread these lies about me and vicious rumors. They never, they never say how I'm wrong or where right. I'm wrong. Now I'm not always right hundred percent about everything I ever say. I have made mistakes and I will put an update on the, Oh yeah, I made a tiny error uh, that, uh, you know, that I made. You in this submit video the retraction in, the in subsection eight, page 12 of the news of, well, of the Randy update. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it in the information section of the video, but the, the majority of what I say is correct, and nobody has ever proven me wrong, except they keep saying that I'm t spreading lies. And but I guess the, the point stuff. is though, that you're open to, to being wrong in the sense that yeah. better information exists out there because there's no reason to not have better information. I'm, I'm right. totally on board and with that. I, again, on the earlier videos, usually when people say I'm wrong and I'm a liar, and I say, send me the link, and they'll send the link, and it's to something totally different, right? I'm, <laughs> right. I'm talking about right. people, regular people that are, were simply transmitting without a, uh, without a license or something, and uh, they send me the link to the guy that got in trouble for, you know, directing helicopter traffic. That's not, you know, during the forest fire. Right. Um, that's not the same as a guy keying up his UV-5R on that that the accidentally held license. down the emergency button and has been transmitting the emergency right. tone for 18 minutes again kind of thing yeah, right. they're, they're not going to paratrooper in you know rappel into through your uh glass skylight and take you out uh bill fisher with a super chat not a rubicon is one of my favorite 
or newest favorite YouTubers. Love the videos. Yeah. Complete tangent question. Have you have you ever heard the story about the BBC television vans? Do you know about this? Uh, no, probably not. I know you got to pay to you got to buy a license to watch TV. You're, you're right, right. And, but but how would they know? They how would they know? Oh. So yeah, I don't know. How do they know? How do they know? So it, people would e illegally be receiving free television, analog television, and the BBC cocked up these uh, vans that had these weird apparatuses on them that, and told the public, no, these, ban these vans, they can sense that you're watching television. You're not transmitting. You're receiving the signals. You can look up these vans. They're the most ridiculous thing ever. Very funny. Uh, that was one of my favorite things. I don't, if you haven't seen that, that's a deep dive. I'll have to look that up. It. It's very funny. But here's... I have to talk to my friend uh, Ringway Manchester about that. Oh, yeah, you should. He, yeah, I'm sure he'd, he'd have a, a couple of things to say about that. It was quite funny. So speaking of that, I get that a lot uh, now more than ever. This whole First Amendment means I don't need a license. I didn't necessarily prepare you to talk about this, but something you said made me want to dial into that. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Or, you know, what are you, you know, when you're getting comments on that, how do you reply to people? Uh, I usually just call him an idiot, but secondly, I just, I don't care. Um, but I, and I'm not a lawyer and nor do I pretend to be right. a constitutional scholar. Like the people saying these things usually pretend to be, you know, even though they just got home from their job at Arby's now they get on the couch and they're a constitutional scholar. Uh, I don't know that requiring a license on some frequencies means that they're, you know, inhibiting your freedom of speech because you can use a CB radio or an FRS radio and you don't need any license. So, you know, I just say, I don't know. I'm smart enough to say when I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I've always kind of treated it as like you're you're you are free in a public space to say your mind. Right. And there is publications, the freedom of the press, that kind of thing. Go nuts, right? That's all your ability to do that. Because I always have the opportunity to opt out if I don't want to, right? So we have these human abilities to speak, scream if we want to in a public space, and I can just choose to leave. But I can't, I can't remember the case law for this, but there is like if you amplify your message. So let's say you had a big, powerful bullhorn or a PA system, and you're out there just screaming whatever kind of nonsense then that draws the question of now in pressing your information upon somebody right that you you're now going beyond the freedom of human speech you're now into the realm of forcing people to have to listen it's kind of like that whole your rights end your your fists rights end where my nose begins kind of thing when it comes to self-defense that whole deal that's kind of how i look at it so when it comes to the radio services and again this is this is actually a kind of fun topic that um that Randy and I were talking about beforehand, but you'll have to go watch his videos because he's he's going to be making a video about this in the future. But the the good side of the FCC, and I've talked about why the FCC exists, and, and well, not why they exist, but why I appreciate that they exist. And it's um, because you at least have an idea who's on the air with you, right? Um, that's kind of the thing with encrypted radios as well. That's always a, a question that I get. Like, I'm not a staunch supporter of encrypted radios on amateur radio because... Well, how do I know who's on the other end or that they even want to talk to me? There could be some nameless, faceless organization slash corporation that's hogging up the bands. I don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was a, <laughs> going on a tirade there. But let's see. Uh, I got a couple more super chats. I want to hit those. Really. Oh, my gosh. We got a. Let's see. Someone says, love the site. Well, welcome. This is uh, YouTube. It's It's been yeah. around for a little while. They've made some changes along the way, but uh, appreciate that. Member for seven months, Chris Radio and Life. Appreciate you, buddy. Uh, let's see. Going down the list. Another one from uh, Corpse Lot. It's mostly Randy's fault. I got my technician license. Thanks, Randy. GMRS is a hell of a gateway drug. This is So, Randy, this is even funnier because I, I literally know Corpse Lot personally. Like, we were playing League of Legends years ago when my wife was pregnant she was playing we were playing with this guy her water broke and we had to leave the game and run to the hospital to have our first son so this you oh, wow. brought this guy to radio i didn't do it he knows that i make these videos he he does now have a ham radio license but take that as a compliment that's pretty yeah, serious wow thank you yeah yeah a lot of people go from uh from gmrs uh mm-hmm 
to ham, obviously, but a lot of us just stick with GMRS. And that's another thing that that's some fine. people don't understand. Uh, and they, for some reason, keep trying to recruit us. Uh, I think you guys get a bonus every time you sign somebody we, we up. Do. The way these we do. We do. People, I, th I figured so. We get an extra um, month of the ARRL membership. That's that's how it works. <laughs> we turn that in. It's a chit. We get a chit. A ham ah. chit. All right. Uh, you know, for some of us, GMRS is just fine. It's a tool when we, I use it when I'm off-roading. And uh, when I'm done off-roading, the radio turn is turned off, and I don't really think about it again until uh, until I go off-roading again. Although I do have a repeater, and I do yeah. have handhelds all around the house, but I don't use them every day. I mean, you you have a repeater that you're affiliated with as well, so you know you'll probably occasionally check into that or whatever. Or it was my repeater; it. it's in my right. garage. Um, but I mean, and, like uh, you you, it's a tool. You may not, it's on 24 7. Other people are right. using it, but you don't right. necessarily have to be using it all the right, time. Right, right. Right. Yeah. right. I don't. I'm not weird. <laughs> so let's double back to something you said earlier because this was kind of a fun thing. Let me make sure I got through all the super chats. I think there was another one. Oh, by the way, we'll take questions uh, in a little bit of time here. We'll take some questions. You know what? We'll take this one because this is this is for Randy specifically. Super Chat, what is the story behind your channel name? I don't know if that was... We'll take it both ways. You go first, Randy, then I'll go. All right. The story... My channel name is Not a Rubicon Productions. It is named after my Jeep because in the olden days, I used to make off-roading videos with my Jeep. Uh, mm -hmm. The name of the Jeep is the Not a Rubicon, and... The reason it's named that is because the high-level Jeeps, the, the high-level trim, the most expensive trim, is called uh, the Rubicon. The bougie so trim. So you'll see, what's that? The bougie trim. Yes, yes. <laughs> so you'll see Jeeps with the, the name on the hood. Uh, it'll say Rubicon. Well, that means I paid a lot of money for my Jeep is what Rubicon means. Right. Mine was the low-dollar, cheapo, poor man's Sport X model. It really? is not. A Rubicon, yeah. Bottom, I knew bottom. that story, but I didn't know yours was like almost the base model. That's pretty oh, yeah. interesting. Uh, no power windows, no no nothing. Um, you know, stick shift, because it's a man's Jeep. Um, so mine is not a Rubicon. So that's the name of my Jeep. I made off-roading videos. So what else uh, better to name the, uh, the channel is, uh, you know, other than uh, the best name at the time was not a Rubicon. Now I don't make those videos anymore because nobody watches them, and the name just sort of stuck. Yeah. Let me go back here. So I get hit a lot with uh, where I, – I, I now am the ham radio crash course, but for over a decade, I think, I was Hosh Nasi, which if you work – Yeah, you I don't know what to, that means. You don't have to work too hard. Ex. So my name is Josh Nass, Hosh Nasi. So it, it's oh. just my name. Um, it, it was from college. I had a Japanese professor for uh, relational databases, particularly SQL. And uh, I had a, a, a period of time where I wasn't getting back any of my assignments. Like, I just wasn't getting them. And one day he was, like, pissed off, and he's yelling. I was sitting in the back, probably goofing around with my buddies. And he's, like, yelling, Hush! Nasi! And he's holding a stack of papers, and he's pointing at me. And, and he's like, Hosh Nasi. And I'm like, oh, I'm Hosh Nasi. Okay. <laughs> so then I got up and I picked up like, you know, two months worth of assignments that I just didn't pick up because he kept calling Hosh Nasi. I'm like, I don't know who that is. Um, so that, that's the name. That's where that came from. I, I, I saw that on, yeah. see that name on your ex and I always, yeah. yeah what the heck is well, that e everybody also goes like, what is this Hosh Nazi? And, and they're oh. like, oh, you're a Nazi. And, and then they see KI6NAZ. Because that was what the FCC oh. gave me. I didn't pick that. And so they're like, are you some kind of Nazi out here? Is this a fascist channel? I'm like, no, man. It's a Japanese professor that couldn't say my – that had an accent that, you know, just was strongly, you know, saying the name. So uh, there you go. There's a super chat. You got more than you bargained for in that one if it was just for not a Rubicon. Uh, but let's see. Oh, man, there's so many people in the chat. We have – how many people we got watching? We have uh, five – no way. We have a 1,000 people watching right now, Randy. Is that a record? Uh, no, my highest ever was thirteen hundred, oh, but I right. gave a radio away on that one. So, if you want to give away one of those walls, you got me. Of, uh, <laughs> I got you. You know, I, you. I I do give away my radios, and you, I just took great. an entire my trunk of my car was filled. I filled them up, and I donated them all to the local GMRS club up the road. So all I have left right now is what's on the uh, 
the uh, Jenga wall of radios. Oh, I love it. Those. I do. I do love. So, um, curi- curiosity wise, you have those flashing. Is that right. just you've got the squelch on the hair trigger? Is that what makes them squelch or, or go off um, and on? Like, how are you doing that? Are you actually? They're scanning. So each one is oh! almost all of them are oh, on they're scan. scanning. Oh, okay, that makes perfect right. sense. Right, and plus, and a couple of them uh, are just set on one channel, and it's just a busy. Uh, we've got uh, what we call Radio Tijuana. Uh, oh, I know exactly what you're talking hill. about. <laughs> <laughs> <So> those guys. <laughs> they don't stop. Those guys, it never stops. Twenty. You know, we call those long talkers, and those guys. They're I don't on know the what they're talking shoe. about. They're on they, the rag. And they're good of guys. Shoes. Yeah, absolutely. I know the owner of. Uh, of this one repeater, he doesn't live too far from me. Great guys, but they just never shut up. So it works I, out good for me. It, it's tough because uh, I'll put my GMRS on scan, and I get stuck on those guys every iteration. Is there a, a skip feature on scan for some of these? On radios? most radios, on I got to go. Yeah. I, I've got one. Uh, I've got a couple, but the one that I use the most is that Midland, and I think I have to swap that out to the to the Wushun, uh, the fifty water. Because like I need to, I need to be able to skip this channel because it's it's too much. It's it's, it's never ending. It's nonstop. Yeah. Uh, Prep Ham Paul says I found you. I found you, Randy, because of Jeeps. Then Sad Hams. Then GMRS. And love your no BS frankness videos, Randy. It's informative and comical. I will Why? give. Uh, Thank you very much. I will give a shout out to Randy. Uh, Randy has a actually a, a really storied history of of video development, and one of the really amazing things that he did was this mini series on hiking around the Salton Sea. And I got to kind of hear that firsthand when when you know you were nice enough. When to you were me... trapped in the jeep with me for no, it was great, man. We had a lot of fun. Get and away! You, and you told me all about it. And I, I found it so cool because it was kind of a thing that I didn't I know of the Salton Sea, but the whole Save the Salton Sea effort that you went through was really fascinating. So if you go to his channel and just click on the little magnifying glass and type in Salton, you'll, you'll get a really fun little deep dive into something that you know you were very passionate about and, and physically put your body on the line to be able to do something, which I thought was really, really cool. Josh, I put my life at risk. Literally did. It was, uh, it was, yeah. uh, it, it was, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a big adventure. Yeah. Um, well, I think we got another one here. Rob Thorne, total newbie here. I just got my Baofeng UV25 Alpha. Where do I start? And then what do I do next? Please help me. Get your license because if you transmit without a license, you'll go to jail. It'll immediately explode in your hand and and take out your family. Uh, I made a post. I'm sorry, not a post. I made a video called uh, Chirp Next, How to Program or something along those lines. It's like the fastest to the to the point way to program your video if you want to do something like that. Um, Radio. So, yeah, it's it's pretty easy. Uh, Bruce, David Bruce says, a ham chit for not a Rubicon. So now there's a, a fun drive to get you licensed. Don't send super chats to get Randy licensed. It's not going to work, even if I send him the money. <laughs> Another super no chat. You guys oh. had the chance to have me in your club, and you blew it. You, you blew it, guys. See? Uh, what's up with six? Oh, Vern, what's up, Vern? Good to good to see you in there, man. You've been working hard too. Vern's been doing a lot of stuff. I don't I don't know that. I've... Go go check out what's up with six. Go go to his YouTube channel and check him out. He's up to some pretty fun stuff. Randy helped this old ham pick up a GMRS radio once. After I was already an al- uh, an amateur extra, people who think there are classes between hams and non hams are missing the point. Thanks again, Randy. Oh, well said. That's very nice. Yeah. So let's circle back and and we'll. So everybody who uh, posts your questions, resubmit them. And what you want to do is you want to type question in the chat or at Hammerio Crash Course, and we'll get the questions to Randy, and so he can answer them. But I want to circle back a step. The ARRL and the notices that they sent out, right? Um, it's it's oftentimes in QST. I think it's towards the end of the magazine. But uh, you you made a point about that. So what are they doing there? Or I guess what do you think the impact is? Well, I think they're helping guys know that hey, you know, maybe you're innocently making a mistake. Yeah. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, they're letting people know when they're uh, breaking the rules. Um, mm-hmm. But they're not the FCC, and you know, if you continue to break the rules, uh, the I guess the that extraordinary League of Gentlemen 
group does work with directly with the FCC. So they if do. you if you piss them off, they have an ear at the FCC. Yeah. So if if you get a letter from them, you know, you should probably stop being a dickhead. Um, but I'm guessing they probably submit a lot of complaints every year to the FCC, along with millions of other, I don't know how many, because I don't have access to the data, but you can uh, submit complaints to the FCC online. It's very easy to do. So they're, I'm sure they're getting thousands every month or hundreds of thousands a year. And we've seen how many of the uh, people the FCC actually goes after. Um, so I don't know how much uh, the FCC cares. What's funny is but, if they yeah. end up tuning up this video and then it starts this uh, Gestapo-esque raid on <laughs> people who are red. Because I, I don't know. I mean, you probably know this, but uh, there are a number of people that work for the FCC in our local area that do active uh, research and create cases against those that are uh, creating interference. But as you probably expect... They're mainly going after the paid-for licenses or protecting the paid-for licenses. So private, you know, pirate radios. They're really who... big against the pirate radios. They, yeah. As I was going through everything, because for one of my videos, uh, recent videos, I went through all of the actions over the last uh, yep. 10 years. And I think they went after more pirate guys uh, than anything else, including because uh, uh, they do a lot of stuff. Um, and I think they did more actions against pirate radio guys than anything else i guess if you and, and it, i don't understand why because they're not making money directly well they're, the pro it, they're protecting they're their... protecting yep so kiss so, fm 102.7 here in socal right if uh if they're getting stepped on or they have a perception they're getting stepped on they probably got a hotline of a name they can call and be like hey get this guy off the air blah 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 Right. They'll go after that immediately. And I yeah. guess they can't appear that they're not policing those frequencies because then that would call into question. Why are we paying for this? Why? Do we, right. Right. They don't yeah. like the pirate radio guys. They don't. All right. Uh, super chat from Corpse a lot. So last super chat. But on the topic of the FCC, there's a repeater in New York City on RPT 20 that has had one or two jammers for the last 10 years, and it's still ongoing. It's a known problem with the same bad actors. Yeah, we had a uh, repeater jammer problem uh, with our big repeater out here mm -hmm. in Southern California a while back, and uh, the FCC does not care. We, we had two, well, we had multiple jammers, but two major issues with two different, one was a group of people, actually they were both groups of people, but uh, we had uh, a group that was uh, ended up threatening us, threatening our lives, threatening to go and tear Whoa. down the equipment. It, it got, you know, all this over walkie-talkie. <laughs> playing, we're playing walkie-talkies, and these guys, it's, you know, <laughs> they're gonna, gonna kill, kill a guy. <laughs> these guys. We're gonna HD up your entire family. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the, we reported to the FCC. Everybody in our club did the online report to the FCC. They didn't care. We ended up going to the sheriff's department because of wow. the death threats. Who was willing to take it seriously? Uh, but the FCC didn't care. And then we had on uh, another group of people that were just your common jammers. The FCC does not care. We were able to track down uh, a couple of our jammers using a Kraken. I made a couple yeah. of videos about that. Incredible piece of hardware. Uh, uh, I was able to get one guy mobile driving around. Thought he was immune because wow. he was driving around with the walkie. Uh, so with it's the, that uh, radio good. Car. If, if you are, you have to be within simplex range of them because you got to listen to them sure. on the input of the repeater. Uh, yeah, it is that good. It's, you got to learn how to use it. it. It took me a couple of months to learn how to use it effectively, but just with a lot of practice and we had jammers, so it was easy to practice. Target uh, within a couple of hours, we caught that clown red-handed, watching him do it as he drove by. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very good. And since the uh, FCC doesn't do anything, well, we took care of those problems ourselves. We uh, had discussions with them. But I can see a lot of uh, people like there in New York just taking the law into their own hands and bad things going to happen. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I, I know... the FCC doesn't care. Yeah, I, I know of you know violent encounters that have happened over repeater scuffles, right? It's, right, it's, right. It, that Again, is, we're, you're, we're talking about walkie-talkies, I right? know. We're, I, we're it's playing crazy. on walkie-talkies, and yeah. we're going to beat each other up just over Just turn it. the thing off um, or something. I don't know. Yeah, but it's. I've said this online before. Um, 
certain personality types get attracted to certain hobbies. And there is a certain personality type that tends to be attracted to uh, playing on radios. Mm-hmm. And on all sides, whether it's people, GMRS people, or amateur, it's, you know, you yeah, just playing same. on radios, period. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of like being on the internet where you think you're anonymous uh, and you can do or say whatever you can want to do without getting in trouble, but that Kraken, uh, it's not very expensive, and <laughs> you're not anonymous with that Kraken because it'll track you down. Uh, oh, I got a challenging super chat here from Sean Sullivan. Why should we watch your courses, Josh, if the FCC is toothless and half of Randy's audience won't bother with the rules? Uh, so let's decouple this a little bit. I'll take the first part here. Why should we watch your courses, Josh, if the FCC is toothless? So the reality is, is if you uh, if you do transmit without a license, nobody's going to talk to you, right? That's that's the reality of, of it. Amateur radio operators generally will ask you, hey, do you have a license? And if you don't give it after multiple back and forth, most of them will just be like, you know, screw this guy. We're, we're moving on to other things. This is somewhat more likely to happen on a repeater where the frequency stays the same. But on HF, they'll just tune the dial. They'll be off of you. You're done. We won't talk to you. Not like what you see in the movie Frequency because the son doesn't have a license, but he still talks to him. That's not real life. Uh, But with that said, if you then copy someone else's license, let's say you, you just take somebody else's call sign and you start using that, pretty quickly they figure out that you're not that person and then you become persona non grata all over again. So it, it's not, let's put it this way. You get nothing from getting people off on a bad footing with you right off the gate, particularly if it's a local repeater, because you're literally physically adjacent to these people. You gain nothing by starting off with a distrustful stance. But Josh, I have a question on yeah. that. So, mm-hmm. so I can see where, like you're saying, if I want to talk to anonymous men, they're going to ignore me mm-hmm. if I don't have a license. What if I just want to talk with my with my buddy? On our we just pick a frequency, not you know interfering with anybody else. Nobody else started talking, and we just want to talk amongst ourselves mm-hmm. on the ham radio frequencies. So why should I bother to get a license to do that? Uh, that's Josh? a that's a dang good question. So why should you bother? Well, because again, that's the FCC rules that you should be following right. the FCC right. rules. And there is something to be said for that. I mean, yeah. Okay, go on. I, it, it, I'm it, listening. It depends on Wall how you want to live Josh. your life. If you if you like to live your life on just like I'm unwilling to play ball with the way it's always been done or been done for decades and decades, and you think you're the main character of your own story arc, or, or the story arc of the entire world, then yeah, I, you can. The FCC obviously is not really policing this stuff very hard. With that said, people who don't understand radio very well like the people who potentially first time radio buy a Baofeng UV5R and they turn it on and it goes, you know, in in Chinese starts screaming at you, but it's already pre-configured for channels and they think, "Oh, hey, good. It's already set up for me." And they start using those channels between their buddies. Don't know how to program the thing, don't know how to use the thing. Um the, the Baofengs have been delivered to locations where it has pre-programmed frequencies that are first responder frequencies like the ambulance drivers, right, for instance, paramedics. And those people have definitely, that is one that I do know happened where they went and found those guys and said, hey, you can't be using these frequencies. That was not an FCC thing. That was the paramedics got involved with the cops and the cops went and found those people. And they were like, you guys, you're literally talking on the wrong frequencies. So a bit of it is, Uh, uh, go ahead, go ahead. uh, All right, so... And I ask this because we've yeah. had this discussion online. Not you mm-hmm. and I have had this discussion with others online. So how does getting a license mm-hmm. make that not happen? Well, because the license has nothing to do with good. how this to use good. your radio. You're, you're pushing Josh. these questions back on me. I like this. So a lot of the times it does, right? Because the, the baseline of the license, at least for technician, does give you some information on how to use the radio appropriately. And it lays out some of the understanding of the rules. I, I would argue that the majority of the license, the questions you're going to see have to do more with safe application of radio and the FCC rules. Now, rules in this case aren't like, thou shall not do this because that's fun and we don't want you to do it. It's thou shall not do this because 
you could be stepping on a first responder frequency. You need to stay within this frequency space. Well, what is this frequency space? It's 144 to 148 whatever megahertz, right? And that's so, specifically on the test? Yeah. The frequency range for the band? two meter or whatever? I believe okay. so, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It even covers down into HF, uh, some of those things okay. for technician, because you have 10 meters and stuff like that as well. So there are a number of what I would call FCC rules questions that are on the test that are designed to kind of what I argue is help those amateurs play better together because it treats radio, specifically in the amateur radio bands, as kind of being in the sandbox together. We all got to play well. We can't be kicking sand in front of everybody's faces or, you know, digging in somebody else's hole, that kind of thing, right? That's kind of the way I look at it. Um, now to the second thing, if the FCC is toothless and half of Randy's audience won't bother with the rules. So I, I think that's a bit of a disservice to Randy. I don't think Randy's audience doesn't care about the rules, although I would argue that GMRS is a little bit, is it a little bit easier or do most people even care about the license with GMRS, Randy? Or how would you answer that latter, that latter part? Yeah, I, I think a lot do and a lot don't. It mm -hmm. is a lot easier if you have a GMRS radio. Um, you know, it's harder to break the rules because the rule, most of the rules are baked into the radios. Uh, but oh, there's a lot true. of people. Yeah. A lot of my audience um, is looking to learn how to use their radios in a, you know, shit hit the fan type situation. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not going to be out there chit-chatting with people, you know, looking to chat with the anonymous men for fun all the time. Um, and and they have no intention of getting a license. Um, and, you know, is there something wrong with that? If Is that really a problem if when there's a hurricane that comes through town and, you know, a guy needs to talk to his neighbors or his family uh, during that time and he doesn't have a license? Um, is that really a problem? I, I don't know. Uh, I would prefer that he does it on GMRS other than, instead of HAM. But um, a lot of people just aren't going to get a license. My, my concern with, uh, with GMRS, and again, it, it's only in certain areas in an emergency, is the congestion you might experience, right? And, and that's just because it's channelized. Yeah, and there's fewer, fewer channels, fewer frequencies. Right, right. Just the, the, the frequency sets, the, the channels. There's only so many of them, and if you live in a more urban environment than I think both Randy and I live in, then that could be a problem. Also, your ability to just be eavesdropped upon is way higher, right? Because you literally can just scan the, the X number of channels, and you're hearing everything, right? Kind of. True, know. true. Yeah. That's why I have my business license and use encryption legally on... Uh... My radio. Which is another radio service that is worth mentioning because, yeah, it's important as right, well. It's better than ham. Better than ham. Well, Because no, I can use you encryption. Can't do, you can't use HF, though. Yeah, but see, that doesn't matter to me. So to me, <laughs> my business license is, is better. It's more useful. I guess it's what each person wants. What's important if, to each person. If it, if it hits your requirements, then that's exactly the that's right the answer. That's the one that's, that's better. Right. Exactly. That's right. Ham Radio Hobby. That's a good channel name. I like how much the FCC lets us police our hobby. We are lucky it's not like other agencies who just make up rules as they go. No, you guys make up the rules as you go. And uh, that's part of the problem is getting yeah. your little plastic FCC badges going online, uh, <laughs> you know, saying that we're going to go to jail because I'm reporting you. I, I will say that, uh, yeah, the FCC is actually pretty even-handed with with letting the those that use the services kind of police the service but then i guess at the same time they're not listening when they need help right. in the right. case there that you already a, dipped upon the the policing yourselves you know there's sort of a peer pressure there that i'm sure is helpful right and uh except for the people that don't care what the peers have to say or they're there specifically to piss them off which right. just makes it more fun for them so yeah. So this is one for Randy. Uh, Super Chat. Randy, I've seen your videos on your two repeaters. Have you built a simplex repeater? And what mobile radio would you use? $500 or under. See, he got the right. He added the the dollar amount. Right. Winner. You, you included right. the the budget. Never right. never give no budget because we'll give you the, the sky's the limit answer. Right. You'd be uh, a no, rolling around in built... Motorola's. <laughs> I have not built a simplex repeater, just not worth my time. I did build the two uh, the repeater out of two uh, KG1000Gs. Mm -hmm. Did not perf it performed well, but 
not as well as a, as a purpose-made repeater, which is what I use now. Uh, a, a mobile radio for under 500, definitely a KG-1000G, uh, or a good used uh, business radio like an XTL-5000, uh, if you can get that. You might be able to find one for under $500, but it'd be, it'd be tough. Go with the but the KG-1000G yeah. is, is a, is a is, if you want a we, uh, radio that can do a lot, KG-1000G, if you just want something to go off-roading or whatever uh, and just talk to the other people in your group, then the Midland radios, the uh, 575 or the uh, 500, MXT-500, are yeah. good radios. And good, if you want, simple radios. If you want a KG-1000G, go take my link in the description to buy2wayradios.com. I don't know. It. Use my link. My link <laughs> no, you're on my channel. My affiliate link below. Yeah, I can't put my links in. All right. Yeah, yeah we Josh's got you on that one. All right. Uh, so I, I will do a shout out to this cool box. I did a I did a video on this, this Argent Systems, the ADS-1 SR-1. Or sorry, the ADS SR-1. It's a simplex repeater box that connects into... Uh, basically whatever you can interface into. So it'll take the Baofeng connector. It has uh, like a voicemail box system. It has uh, automated messaging that you can do, and it'll do simplex repeating. I will say for everybody that's watching, if you think you need a simplex repeater, you probably don't. They're not a very fun thing to use because you have to wait. You have to you talk into it, then you let go. It replays your message, and then whoever hears it then talks back into it, and then it replays their message. It's an incredibly long process to convey information with a simplex repeater. Very not, not ideal from my point of view. All right. So I uh, we got to the, okay we got to the end of the super chat so let me go back up here for questions because I think we got a couple of them for you. Question: uh, If you got you got the time, we're over the hour. You got yeah, I'm good. Little, okay, I'm good. Question: Why not join us hams, Randy? Join the Borg and get a free ham sandwich. Yeah, that's uh, that's you've never heard that yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. How much is he getting for that? If I join up, he gets a ham chit, one ham yeah. chit. Yeah. Hammer to Crash Course, I remember the 435 machine jammer, a HT in an ammo box buried in the gravel at a fast food joint. I'm a Del Taco, bro. Come and get me. That's all I got to say about that one. You know about the 435? No. You should Google that. It's a, it's a, you could probably get it from where you're at. The 435 repeater is a well known, it is the most icely cantina of ham, uh, Oh, okay. Ham radio yeah, repeaters. yeah. I've listened to it. All yeah. right. When you say it that way, I know what you're talking about. So, uh, Interstellar Starman says, "Question: Did they converse with open carry?" I don't know what the question. Open carrying your radio or your firearm? I, you should do both. <laughs> As a strong supporter of the Second Amendment, open carry your brown best wherever you go. Oh, maybe he's talking about when we took care of our jammers ourselves. Oh, 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 I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you said yeah. you conversed. The, yeah. We we did. And again, this is just, just walkie-talkie stuff. No, right. I wouldn't. No, I didn't. Uh, did not come into play. Did not need to. Don N5SKT dropped the link for the Kraken. And yeah, by the way, guys, the Kraken is an amazing tool. You should go check out Randy's videos if you if you want to get more into that. But yeah, you can you can DF a lot of things with the Kraken. Very you can cool. DF everything, anything. Yeah. If it's transmitting, and it doesn't even have to be transmitting very much, even if you're mobile, yeah. it'll find you if, with, with a good operator. Ironhead Bill with a cool pipe photo. Good for you. Uh, welcome to Technician. Thanks for joining us on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Appreciate that. Oh, got a super chat. AA4CB, Chris, what do you think about internet linking of GMRS repeaters? Good, bad? GMRS Live has a great free network. Yeah, uh, my repeater used to be on Zello. Uh, didn't really link up with other repeaters, but it was on the internet. And I've seen a lot of stuff recently, the online uh, legal experts saying that linking over the internet of GMRS repeaters is not permitted by the FCC rules. That's my understanding, yeah. I've read those rules, and, you know, the stuff that they write is so vague and so ambiguous sometimes. It's but like, with a lot of words. They still somehow pack a ton of words into something yeah. that's ambiguous. Yeah, I agree. Right. So I would uh, – I first of all, I don't care. You want to link your repeaters, I don't care. Um, but until it's actually been tested by somebody uh, getting in trouble by the FCC and then 
you know, that standing, if they fight it and say, uh, you know, basically, if they actually get in trouble for it. I, I don't even know that it's worth doing because if you've got a bunch of linked up repeaters, doesn't it just get a kind of noisy and difficult to, to talk on when you key up my repeater here and then you're keying up in New York at the same time and then you got some guy on the internet trying to talk and then you got another guy in New York trying to talk. Isn't it just a big, what do you call that, a log jam or clusterfuck or backup There's or also, I mean, amateur radio operators deal with this. There's also a timing, like a delay, you know, the latency right. of, of the network. Right. And I, I know from listening to my GMRS radio often that, and by the way, this happens in ham radio, but a little bit less. One of the things that's on the license exam is that you give uh, a space between when you key up and when you stop talking on a repeater. GMRS has no concept of this. People quick key the crap out of a repeater. The, the repeater doesn't even stop. It, it doesn't let go. <laughs> it, like literally one guy will let go and the other guy's right under him and he's he's transmitting boom, 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 boom. So even if you internet linked all of it, could you imagine the the cacophony of collisions that would be happening? It'd be crazy. Yeah, yeah it just seems like a cluster. Yeah. All but right. good or bad, I don't know. I don't care. Yeah. That was the question. Well, I, I, this goes back to the whole like, I don't know. Try it. If somebody wants to do it, <laughs> give it a shot. See how it goes. Yeah. And there's some big networks out there, like you yeah. said. Ed C says, I tend to go with the rule of thumb. Don't be a dick. I Always a good rule to live by. I, I've gone through life working with that, and it, it works out really well. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. We got a su uh, new member, Andy, AA0AM. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you uh, joining us. So, okay, let's see if we get a couple questions in here. Wondering if Randy would have a problem with folks transmitting on business bands without a license. Again, I don't care. Um, but I think a business who is running their business, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think that would be very important to them if you were causing interference mm -hmm. and causing a problem. If you're just transmitting on an open business frequency, I know somebody that used to do that all the time. It didn't. There was no victim. It was a victimless crime. Who cares? Um, but if you are okay. causing interference to a business that has paid the FCC for that allocation, for that frequency that they're using, then you're being a dickhead and you shouldn't be doing that. Um, but just using the frequency, just using a business frequency without a license, it's a victimless crime. I don't care. So uh, I, I think you might have answered it, but maybe maybe reiterate it. So what if it was the same for ham radio or GMRS if they don't have a license? You're saying as long as they're not causing interference, you don't care. It's a victimless crime. Yeah, if uh, I don't care. Um, I don't care if they are causing interference, but I don't think it's right if they're causing interference. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't care. All right. So question, isn't Hollingsworth still running the volunteer monitoring program? So this is a ham thing. So uh, I think it was, oh, I can't remember his first name. Raleigh? Uh, somebody will correct me in the chat. Hollingsworth. By the way, this is a really good talk this guy did at the ARRL, and it was called Mo Turn the Big Do the Big Knob. It was basically saying, whenever you get into an argument with somebody on radio, just get off the frequency. Let it go. Arguing on radio is like... Arguing on the internet. It, it's it's like playing chess with a pigeon, right? The, the, the same concept. Is he still running the volunteer monitoring program? I gotta tell you what, guys. I haven't heard much on the volunteer monitoring program. Raleigh Hollingsworth, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, in a long time. So there used to be, I don't know if you knew this, Randy, but there used to be a volunteer monitoring program where hams would uh, just sit and listen on the ham bands, and they'd take notes, and they'd pass them on to the FCC. And they actually sent out cards for good operators and poor operators. And if they're uh, really bad, they did go to the FCC, and, and you know a letter would come from the FCC, et cetera, saying, hey, you should probably do better, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's not the same. It, it's it, I don't think it's I don't think it is what it used to be but yeah the, this ADHD life followed up with another question what is killing GMRS Randy <laughs> is it I don't think anything's killing it it's hot yeah GMRS is getting more and more popular by the day yeah you know what you're talking about uh, but what does kill it is dickheads right mm -hmm. just um, uh, it gets more and more popular there's only whatever the 22 channels yeah. It uh, congestion will be the death of it, mm -hmm. uh, if anything. Um, 
but it's getting more and more popular. It's you know it's CB 2.0. Really. Yeah, you, you know um, the other thing the other thing you have a, a problem with is uh, repeater pairs. The the frequencies for repeaters is difficult because amateur radio has much more repeater right. pairs than right. than GMRS does. And and I believe and again this is something I don't know. This is just the the ham you know the the gossip circle. Uh, getting a, a frequency set to put a repeater up for GMRS is, is that something you had to jump through a lot of hoops on? No, you just pick one and use it. You don't have to there's get no, up. no, no coordination, no anything. No, really? anybody you can just buy. Go nuts. Yeah, it is polite to listen first to make sure nobody else is using it. But if somebody is, basically whoever has the the bigger repeater or the higher mountain is going to win. Uh, we've gone through that. Um, no, there's no coordination, no nothing. You just you pick a channel, uh, a pair, and you start using it. So you got squatters' rights, basically. <laughs> squatters' rights on the frequency. Um. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, uh, it, it's whoever's bigger wins. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's good information. I did not know that. I thought you had to go through some approval process. Nah. So Lex Picks says, "Question: So since the tests are self-administered by local hams, do you guys ever give a guy a break if he's just missed a question by passing? I've often wondered if some have been let through. I know none that have ever been let through for missing a question. Not one." Has it happened? All the hams that no I know way that I, yeah, there's no rules. way. There's no way, right? Yeah. Um, has it happened statistically? It's probably likely it's happened. By the way, we test online now. You can take your test online. It's it's very easy. You do it over Zoom. So yeah, check that out. Randy's shaking his head. No, no, I'm not, not doing it. Again, uh, why, 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 why? Because you get more frequencies. No, what? You get I don't way care. more frequencies and more power. More okay, so power. All right. more okay. power, Randy. So how does that help me talk with my friends with FRS radios when I'm out off-roading? It you doesn't. Could be the, you, could be the, you could have the larger antenna with more power. You can talk to everybody. I have that with GMRS. Uh, having a ham license, having more so power, having a ham radio does not help me talk to my friends using GMRS or FRS Walmart radios yeah. when I'm on the trail. So question, are you, uh, what's, the, what's the upper limit for a GMRS radio for power output? 50 watts. Are you doing that? Well, uh, yeah. No, I can't. I can go beyond that, but it doesn't. You don't need to. I don't need to. Okay. Well, when you're because on the trail, when I'm on the sure. trail, I sure. don't need to. Sure. But what if you're at home and you're you're running a repeater or you're you're trying to do simplex? To again, when I'm at home. I'm not looking to talk to strange men around the globe. You, you, I, I don't use the radio at home. You've you've focused your aperture down very tightly, but like right. it, consider that somebody may not have the same viewpoint as you, right? Maybe they want to talk to their kids, and you know th their kids are in college for some reason. Well, then and, ham and then, radio and, is perfect. No, no, for no. Them. But you yeah. could do it with but you could do it with G GMRS too. But what does it what does it mean? You got to get your antenna higher. You got to have the right. fifty right. watt on both. I'm not sides, saying that you know? ham is not good. You know, yeah. isn't good for no good for everybody i'm saying for me and a lot of people sure we don't care about all that ham radio more frequencies or more power i don't give us i don't care i don't need it I, and that's what a lot of people just can't understand we have this discussion yeah and they just it they cannot fathom how i wouldn't want to talk to people all around the world and how i wouldn't want to be able to transmit it a thousand watts or whatever it, it, it's not. They just don't get it. It's like it can't click in their brain that not everybody wants to do what you want to do. So I'll, I'll parlay this into questions I get a lot. Do Do you take a lot of questions in email? Like if people just DM you, do you, Do you field a lot of questions? No, fuck no, no, I have no. I get a hundred a day. No. Okay, well Jesus. then I then I will pass on the question. I you're get a, all the you're time. a nicer guy than I, I am. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But uh, so I get the question all the time, like. I'm in such and such place, and and my kids are in such and such place, or my parents yes, are in such and such yes, place. I get that. How a many times miles, you know, you know, blah 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 blah, can I transmit? And so, generally, amateur radio is easier to make those gaps workable, right? GMRS is is limited. That's just the reality of it. Right. And and you you use it in exactly the way that you you enjoy it, and you're good, and it's all. Set. I use it in the way that it is designed right. to be mm -hmm. used. Right. So for those emergency prepper questions, blah, 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 
GMRS doesn't always have the answer, right? Because you start getting into ranges right. that they just they just can't right. play with, right? Exactly. Uh, right. But you can use Yaggies. Yaggies will get you way further out. A 70 centimeter Yaggy will do a lot for you. That's, you know, there you go. I guess I'm answering more questions than Randy in the emails. <laughs> Forget Your Life says, what does Randy think about the crowded repeater space of GMRS as the user base continues to rise since there are only eight... I mean, we kind of talked about it, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's nothing you can do now. You can't make more... I guess the FCC could make more frequency pairs, but... Uh, they could, but they won't, or at least not for a long time. Um, yeah, it gets crowded. Sometimes you got to turn it off. Yeah. I, I, again, so do you do um, that when it gets too crazy? Just like, and it's off. <laughs> well, I'm not. No, because I'm not just sitting around listening. So if I'm out off, how dare you, Randy? How dare I you know. not be a good steward of your repeater? Right. Do you when know there's hams that just listen to it all the time? They'll have an earbud yeah, and it can, just is listening all the time. I can freaking imagine sitting in their basement doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so when I go out off roading, I scan all the uh, GMRS channels so mm -hmm. that if somebody's stuck or needs help. You know, we'll hear them. Yeah. And, uh, but sometimes, you know, uh, Radio Tijuana covers a huge part of the desert where we go and mo which is, and they transmit on GMRS channel 16, which is the yes. official, the official off-roading channel of GMRS. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yes. Because the math, if you do them, so when you oh, go off-roading, you're, you're going four, four by four. Four X four is 16. Yes. So it is mathematically proven. All right, so, Good. and that's where Radio Tijuana is on uh, the big repeater yep. out here, yep. and I have to turn it off. So if you're on Channel 16 and you're in the uh, high desert, man, good luck to you, because good those luck. guys are going to step all over you. Yeah, because I have to uh, I have to uh, nuisance them out on my radio all the time. So, yeah, uh, congested uh, repeater pairs can be a problem. Yeah. we live with it. Yeah. Probably not changing either. I think that's what uh, Randy's saying. No, I, it's I, not I, would, I would be inclined to agree. So, Brushy asks, Josh, is the TV show Phantom Signals coming back? This was a mini series that I did with the Science Channel where they brought me as, as the radio expert. And uh, I have not heard anything. It was a Canadian production crew that came out and uh, we did. The contract has not been renewed. Th yeah, the contract has not been renewed. I, I don't, I, it was a one off thing. It was really fast. Like they, they contacted me and a month later. I'm driving out and doing all kinds of videos with them. Uh, I have not heard anything, but it'd be great if they did. I, I would be willing to be a part of that again. Question, what is the intersection of AI and ham radio or GMRS look like? Go ahead, Randy. Go ahead. I know. I know. I had just made a uh, AI chatbot of, uh, of me, an AI version of me that I put on ChatGPT. You can make your own little... Uh, AI apps, and uh, nobody cared. So I don't think there's much of an intersection. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't see how you're going to work uh, AI into, into that. Uh, there, there is an AI processing engine for audio that we use to hear clear audio that removes right, noise. That would be helpful. That's really yeah. good. It works really well. Uh, I did a video on that. but Oh, you know what else would be good for? Mm -hmm. uh, for like pretending that you are someone else, like Josh. And <laughs> don't transmit do this. it. Don't do and that. Say, don't do that. Saying things that they would never say. Because I don't, actually, I don't have enough audio know, recordings out there that they couldn't just sample right, that and do right, whatever they right. wanted. Now that I think about it, yeah. Thank you. That's a great idea. Don't, don't, nobody deep fake my voice, please. Uh, super chat from Sean Grogan. Ham and GMRS licensed here, working on business. I want it all, and I want it now. I'll, I'll yeah, you know, it's part. really easy to get your business license yeah. if you uh, go to, uh, Kemp Wireless in Eugene, Oregon, or mm -hmm. lots of other uh, uh, radio resellers for a couple hundred dollars and a 20-minute talk on the phone, and you got your license. Uh, it's it's really oh. easy. If you try to do the paperwork yourself, it's like 40 pages. Yeah, it's it's, it's not odd. a yeah. A normal person would not figure it out, I don't think, or it would be a huge undertaking. But you just pay one of the services, and it's really easy. Ten days, and you got your. I think I got uh, five or six frequencies. All mine. Not all mine, but kind yeah. of mine. Yeah. Fairly easy, a couple hundred bucks. Super chat from Tenacious21. My two favorite boof wang radio educators just got my GMRS license because of y'all. Thanks for awesome content. Well, thanks. I'm glad man. that he said it correctly. Boof wang. Finally. I, 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 I used that in uh, my, a recent video where I was talking to myself, like I was having a conversation with, with two of me, talking about like, my family is 500 miles away. How do I talk to them? You know, all that stuff. So, yeah. 
Question, if Randy was out camping on BLM land with nothing around, how many FARs will the GMRS get him? Well, it's funny that you ask that because I can now, if I am in my Jeep, uh-huh. uh, and I was in, there's a place called uh, The Hammers, Johnson Valley. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, they have a little race there every year called King of the Hammers. Yep. Uh, from there, I was able to talk to somebody in... Long Beach, California. Oh, wow. That's good. Okay. Through a repeater that's uh, a, a great new repeater uh, up here in this area. So I can get, I can get a lot of FARs. Just regular simplex uh, in the desert. Basically, everywhere I go, it's really limited to the mountains yeah. around me. So 10, 20, 30, 40 miles, um, unless there's a mountain right next to me or whatever. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm plenty happy with the, uh, the FARs I can get. When I'm out in the middle of nowhere. There you go. All right. Uh, somebody keeps trying to bro, uh, bro Weaver. Your your message keeps getting retracted, so you got to reformulate that. Uh, so Bruce, found out about my channel from from Phantom Signals. So thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Les Ferguson says a question from Ireland for Randy. Why not just use his mobile phone? No congestion. Oh, Les Ferguson. <sighs> Oh, see, now, regardless of Randy and I talking back and forth about GMRS and ham hey, radio being the better, we all agree. Phones is not where it's at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go yeah. ahead. I tried using my phone when I'm out off-roading, and uh, it doesn't work. Yeah. Because uh, the desert, the wild outdoors is mostly not covered by phone service. And what was that thing? There was a problem just a couple of weeks ago where phone service didn't work for half the country or a good portion of the uh, country for several hours. Um, yeah, it's good when it works, but for those times when it doesn't work, it's it's not as good to use your phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I think this will be the last question. This is a good one. Bravo Bassin. I think he finally got his comment. In. I don't know what was happening earlier, but uh, Randy, what is the current situation of the Salton Sea? Has the government stepped in to do anything yet to help? Uh, nothing of any significance. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see a lot of headlines, and they're going to do this study and that study. Uh, it's too late. It is my personal opinion that mm -hmm. they needed to do stuff 20 years ago when the state of California was required by law to do uh, many things that they have not done still. It's a lost cause. It will never be uh, the way that it once was, and I think it's going to be more and more of an uh, Owens Lake-type disaster uh, getting worse and worse every year. Even with the rainy season like this, the last year or two that we've had, uh, once we get back into normal rain patterns, it'll continue and uh, lost cause. It's it's, it's sad. Yeah, it's sad. and I, I think for a lot of people that don't know, and you know, Randy, correct me if I'm wrong here, there's a pollution factor that Salton Sea has that a lot of other lakes don't have, and that right. just perturbates right. this issue further, right? Pe people, all the experts always say, well, it's not supposed to be there. It's an accidentally, you know, it's a man-made lake. Just let it go back to the way it was 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is that it's got uh, whatever, 100 or 120 years of uh, agricultural runoff in very fine dust sitting at the bottom. And once that's exposed to the air, it blows all over Palm Springs and Los Angeles and Arizona and Mexico and Idaho, uh, and it's poison when you breathe it. Mm -hmm. So uh, you'll see. Just ignore it. You'll see. Uh, I said that was the last question, but I I, I take that back because somebody asked a really good one, and there was actually two people that uh, that that kind of had the same question. What does Randy think about rapid radio? Now, what is a rapid radio? Does or that answer the question. Well, there, there's a, a there's another question that was a similar thing. Have either of you considered doing a PTT cell phone with UHF radio test? So are you are you following this whole uh, the 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 rapid radios are push to talk over cell phone network handhelds? Have you seen those? Um, yeah, okay, I've seen those. I, similar to a push to talk over the internet, like a Zello yeah. type phone, or like yeah. a, a chirp, okay. like a an Xtel back in the day. Okay. It's the same concept. Uh, yeah, yeah. If if I can't use it when I'm off roading, I don't care. That's it. Yep. Yep. I'm on the same page. All right, so last super chat. Thanks, guys. Lee Ferguson, E I four G E B. So we have a DX contact that we got there in the super oh, chat form. All so. right, KMG three six five. 
<laughs> there you go. Randy, it's been a delight again to have you out here. I, I appreciate you taking the time. It's been a lot of fun. Anything you want to mention before we head out here? Find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at the Not a Rupka. You have been posting some uh, some really fun tweets, getting people all riled up. <laughs> it's been it's, it's been what I do, Josh. Watch. It's what I do. You, you you do it well too. You do it well, sir. <laughs> well, <laughs> until I have Randy on again, guys, I, uh, we appreciate you watching. Randy, hang out. We'll chat in a minute. But I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap things up. All right. <laughs> all right. So make sure you go check out Randy. And again, I highly recommend his Salt and Sea series that he did. It, it's really good. And you can find him, Not a Rubicon Productions. Make sure you avail yourselves in the link in the description. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say a big thank you to the patrons. We're going to close out with that. So patron picks. Boy, howdy. So obviously we're running into the first weekend of the month next month where normally, normally that's patron picks. But we have a special interview lined up, which I, I won't spoil until next week, but it's uh, going to be a lot of fun. So that means we're not going to do the patron picks on the normal weekend. The following weekend is the International DX Convention, which I will be physically at, which we'll do in a special live stream for that. So I, I won't be patron picksing for that. So the third week in April will be the official patron pick episode. And this one is going to be about coax. Oddly enough, they want to talk about coax, when to use different types of coax, why you would use different types of coax, and why is it all important. And I'll tell you right up front, vitally important. Your feed line is one of the most important parts of your entire radio, whatever it is you're doing in radio, particularly GMRS, believe it or not. GMRS is actually um, has big issues with power loss over a long bit of coax. So... Oddly enough, the people that are using GMRS radios could use really good coax because it will help them get more power out the wire, and that will yield more FARs, to use a not a Rubicon term. So, yeah, we'll be talking about coax, which is, you know, it's it's such a mundane topic, but I think it's going to be fun. And I, I may have I, I may have to call in a special guest for that one uh, to give their their thoughts. So, yeah, appreciate it. So lots of people in the comments, lots of people watching. We really do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to hang out with us and ask those questions and uh, just support what we're doing out here. So make sure you go support Randy by giving him a big thumbs up and subscribing and all the other things. And guys, we appreciate you. I'll talk to you well here in a couple of videos, but I'll talk to you live again just after this. If you join us on the Discord, Go to the hashtag live stream, hashtag live stream after chat for voice. I will be live again in a couple of minutes. We're going to turn this all around. We're going to be taking your questions live. We call it the hams helping hams after chat. All right. Very good. We'll talk to you soon. Enjoy the memes. I'll play you out. 73.